Hi, I'm Carl. In this video, we're going to be going over questions 94 and 95 to 98 in section 3 of the green booklet. We'll go over 94 uh, quickly. This one says which one of the following represents the latest stage in the meiotic division of a diploid cell. These nucleus usually contains four chromosomes. So we've got four diagrams here and um, we've been told that it's a meiotic division. So from these diagrams, you should be able to tell uh, what stage of division this is. So um, given that it's a diploid um, cell, so 2n equals 4, this tells us that because we've only got um, four uh, single chromosomes here instead of in their pairs, um, this is going to be anaphase 2. If we look at number 2 now, this looks like metaphase 1. This will be anaphase 1. And then this looks more like mitosis. Um, this We were told this is a meiotic division, um, which explains why we've only got sorry, the one here in the second half and the two chromosomes in this. Um, so that means that the latest stage um, in this case will be this one, which is um, answer A. Moving on to 95 now, which is unit 31. This one's a pretty complicated chemistry question. Um, we've got some choline ions and we're told uh, that's important in the transmission of nerve impulses. Um, the chemistry of this is that it's a quaternary ammonium ion as the nitrogen atom has four organic groups attached to it and so it has this positive charge you can see here. Um, 95 says consider um, chemical one. Um, there's three alkenes that it could produce when heated with the base um, and we've given the three of them here which is options two, three and four. Um, we were told um, that the alkene formed in the greatest proportion is the one that is least substituted with alkyl groups and um, so that's an important one. So that's how we can work out what the major product of this would be. The one that's least substituted with alkyl groups. Okay so what does that mean when we're looking at the alkene um, grip here which I'll draw here, which is this carbon-carbon double bond, the least substituted with different alkyl groups. So while they all have the same number of carbons, um, that's not what it means. So for, for number two, we can see that there's going to be two hydrogen um, atoms on one side, and then a CH2CH3 on this side, and um, a C, oh sorry, a C3H7 on the other side. If we compare this to the other ones, we've got um, they're more substituted with alkyl groups because some of these hydrogens are going to be replaced with, for example, a CH, um, a CH group or um, a CH3 group, which means they're going to be more substituted. So three and four are going to be the minor products because we have these hydrogens here. This is the least um, substituted with alkyl groups that you could possibly have from this particular compound. So the answer is going to be the major product is 2, which means the answer for this one is going to be A. 96 is the complicated one. It says the only alkene produced when choline hydroxide is heated with the base could be hydroxyethylene, but it immediately ranges to form acetaldehyde. The reason for this is what? So ethylenes um, do not have any isomers um, in their structure, and I'll, I'll draw out what the structure is here. We can see it's CH2. CHOH and there's no forms of isomers for this um, because we only have these two carbon atoms um, and that's why it's the only alkene that could be produced. So the answer for this one is going to be B. Now 97 is um, I, I think a little bit tricky. We should really understand what's going on um, in these reactions um, in converting this to these products um, and I'll talk through how to work that out. So 97 gives us um, the product and we're asked um, what quaternary ammonium ion could give this product if heated with an excess base and the conditions provided. Um, so I've drawn them all out here as you can see and I think it's worth going through and thinking what would happen if you heated them with this excess base um, at 100 degrees C. Now if you've not covered this um, reaction before it's okay because we've been given the example and what basically happens is this um, N group um, is taken away and that bond is formed then with the least substituted group and that forms the major product. Now that might not make much sense but I'll show you what I mean. So we've got this big long hydrocarbon chain on the left hand side so let's draw that out first. 
got CH3, CH2, CH2, CH2. And that's bonded to this carbon atom, which is then um, attached to this nitrogen. Now, as I said, this carbon atom um, has this nitrogen removed from it. So you can think of it as just sort of disappearing away like this. And it means we've got one extra bond to form. And um, we'll form it with the least substituted um, carbon group, which is going to be this one here. So let's draw in that carbon. Remember, this carbon here is the same as this carbon here. And we've got C, um, H, and then a CH3 group. And we've got our hydrogen, which is this one here. Um, over here, these hydrogens are the same. So that would be the product that would be produced. That's the major product of this reaction, um, which is different to the one that was given, so it's not going to be A. If we look at B then, we're doing the same thing again. Let's get rid of this nitrogen group and think about what carbon this um, carbon will bond with then. So again, we've got our long hydrocarbon group here. So we'll draw in our CH2s and this will bond. This is the carbon here. Okay, so we've got one extra bond. Uh, to form. So which of these two will it form uh, a bond with? Well, it'll be the one that's least substituted with uh, alkyl groups, or the shortest one. So that'll be this group here. So that carbon is the same as this carbon here. Which means we've got two hydrogens on either side, and uh, CH2, CH, CH3 group here. Is that the same as up here? No, not quite. Um, so this would be the major product that's formed, which is different to the one we were looking for. So it's not going to be this. What do I see? Well, again, what we're going to do is we're going to take away our nitrogen group here. And we have an extra carbon um, bond that can form here. And which one is it going to form with? Now, we've got three identical groups, so it doesn't matter. Um, so if we form it with this one, um, we can see what that might look like if we rearrange this in the form that they've written it in. So we've got our CH3, CH2, and that's going to have our carbon-carbon bond. And I'll just circle this. This carbon is the same as this carbon here, just for clarity's sake. So that means one of these hydrogens will be substituted. So, and we've got um, our CH group, CH3 group here. And the other group we have on this carbon is our CH3, CH2 group. Now, is this the same as the product above? Uh, yes, it is. I draw it wrong and I've got be swapped around but it's the same molecule so that means C is going to be the answer so that's the major product that's formed in this case now just for completeness and just uh, for clarity we can see what happens if we try and work out what the major product for D is so again we just want to rub this bit out and we've got one extra bond to form and it's going to form on the group with the with the least substituted um, alkyl so that'll be this one here and so we've got CH3 CH2 as we know our carbon this carbon is going to be the same as this carbon here so we've got our two hydrogens on either side and our ch2 ch2 ch3 group here and of course that's different to the product we had above so we've just confirmed that the answer for this one is going to be c so the answer for number 97 is c and then 98 um is about this which is piperidine, and it can be converted into quaternary ammonium salts and then heated with an excess of strong base. Um, if this reaction was allowed to proceed to completion, the major hydrocarbon product obtained is most likely to be want. Okay, so I think the first step we need to do is work out what the quaternary ammonium salt might look like. And we don't know what it's been um, uh, made into. We don't know what the other groups are. So what we could do is just draw it out as N plus, and then we've got these two groups here. R and we'll call R dash. That is bonded to. And we can draw in the rest of the carbon ring here. Okay, so this is what the ammonium quaternary salt would be. And we've got this positive charge and this benzene ring. And so what will happen with this is um, reacted with an excess of base, is we've got one of these electrons um, will be attracted obviously to this um, nitrogen ion here. And that will cause this bond here to break. Um, and if this bond breaks, and say if we just rubbed it out just for clarity, that means we've got one extra um, available bond that can form here. And so we end up with a salt that looks like this.
and that's sort of following the, the trend we had before. And if we were to look to name that, we wouldn't name it A, B, C or D here. So we say the answer for 98 is going to be D. So that was, I think, a pretty challenging chemistry question. But looking at the example we gave, uh, we were given, I think it, it's manageable. So I, I really